In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, You who are everywhere present and fill all things, Treasury of all that is good, Master of life, come, dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, the first part of this presentation is uh, dealing with this theme that we've been working on for quite a while now, um, contemplation and purity of heart. Um, I was thinking as I was preparing this, how little training there is in the seminaries or even in the religious orders of that dimension of our life which the ancients considered absolutely fundamental and basic. That is, how do we deal with our passions or our emotions? So we're going to start now looking at that side of it. You see, many people come to us who are further advanced in the spiritual life than we are. Because they take the trouble. Their means are very simple. Trying to be pure of heart. Keep away from sin. Say the rosary. Make sure they're at all the liturgical functions that the church wants them to be at. And love their spouses and their children and so forth. Be honest at work. And from that, the Lord guides them. And I'm sure you've all had the experience of having people come who have a very profound spiritual life and don't know that it's something special. But we have to be there. So that's why I've taken this time in this first section of the mass preparation to go over this idea I've been calling contemplation and purity of heart. We simply have to strive for this which means having a greater interior life. So, I'm going to go now and just look at this. You see, we're, we're going to start looking now, starting today, with our present situation and the healing remedies that we should apply to our heart. But before I do that, I should point out some of the features of our Western culture that augment the disorder caused in us by the impulses, or what the ancients called the thoughts, known as the passions. These are movements of the soul toward the realities of this world in a disordered way, or away from these, fear, but in a disordered way. They're emotions. The term used generally is passions because it comes from the the notion of passive, receptive. These things act on us And we have to get where we have authority over them. And that takes struggle and work and prayer. And most of all, if possible, a real spiritual director, somebody who can hear what the Lord wants next of us and guide us, clarify things when they get difficult. Okay. So, um, these impulses in us, uh, known by the, by the ancients, known as uh, thoughts, we call them passions. They are movements of the soul toward re- the realities of this world, but in a disordered way. Uh, they are, as I'm going to tell you, tell you in a minute, see the passions or the emotions are bodily changes brought about through images in the imagination. The object may be present or absent. When confronted with present objects, the reaction may be disordered by the object in itself, fear, lust, anger, or by association with former images in the memory and imagination. I'll come back to that. Now I want to just discuss, this is Maximus, the confessor, uh, in his treatise, 
to Thalassium. Um, and I just want to go over this. These passions, uh, pathimata, pleasure, grief, desire, fear, and the rest. See, they reflected, what are the basic movements of my emotions, you see? Well, I like pleasure. I want to move toward pleasure, you see? Uh, and uh, grief, sadness, pleasure is reaction to a, to a present good. Grief is a reaction to a present evil. Fear is a reaction to a future evil. Desire, reaction to a uh, future good, and so forth. See? Now, this is the way Maximum talks. These passions were not originally created with human nature, for if they had been, they would contribute to the definition of human nature. But following what eminent Gregory of Nyssa taught, I say that on account of humanity's fall from perfection, the passions were introduced and attached themselves to the more irrational part of human nature. Then, immediately after humanity had sinned, the divine and blessed image was displaced by the clear and obvious likeness to unreasoning animals. You know, did you ever see deer run away when a wolf or something going after them? Or did you ever see the way human beings are? Even going into dumpsters to get food or screaming? Or, uh, and so forth, out of order. So, uh, these are bodily changes brought about by what's going on in the imagination. That's why one of the keys of the spiritual life is to get authority over these. But you just can't let them run riot and then try to get authority. What causes these things? Huh? Attachment to pleasure. I just love ice cream. Well, then watch yourself. I don't mean never eat it, but watch yourself. It can be disordered out of, out of rational order or fear. Oh, what's going to happen to the stock market? What's going to happen to the, see, uh, those sort of things. Fear. Fear dominates many people. And to go and along with it goes anger because fear is a reaction to a present evil. Anger is another reaction to that, trying to repulse it and so forth, you see? Now, as I say in these little notes to myself here, we are probably the age with the greatest knowledge of the secondary level of interaction, that is, memory and imagination. When does self-knowledge in our day arrive at experiencing the depth of the soul-spirit? That dimension as the mirror reflecting God. Look at the scholastic understanding of knowledge, for instance, which is a participation in the light of God. Now, our tendency when these things are out of order is to apply chemical and or electric, electronic means to alleviate the symptoms of the interior suffering. Now, this science has grown a lot and it can be very helpful. Most of it has to do with memory. Uh, and the misinterpretation of reality that comes a lot through disorder in the family life. Father or mother uh, not reacting in a wholesome, integrated human way and therefore disturbing the incipient balance of our reactions, our passions, if you will. Um, and then the second level of psychic activity is profoundly affected by an ever-increasing and intrusive presence of the surrounding cultures. Laws, some of them evil, like abortion, media, market economy, and then the way that our senses are impacted all day uh, by the television more than anything else because the images are right there. And uh, they produce all these reactions in us and fear. 
you see? And so, uh, the culture, the laws, media, market economy. When is the person ever alone and present to themselves? Especially if we're not striving for an hour's prayer a day. And I mean an hour, consecutive hour, not 15 minutes, four times a day. You see, we need, and this is a, our healing comes through prayer, time with God, reading the scriptures and then pondering them, and letting the Holy Spirit educate us, you see. Uh, also, the deteriorization of family life fills people with fear. I think it's one of the basic reasons for teenage suicide. There doesn't seem to be any reason to go on with this life. There's no love, there's no understanding, there's no future. And there's fear and competition and mockery. Uh, and so the deterioration of, uh, deterioration of family life, confusion about sexual identity and so forth. All of these, you see? Uh, that's why, as I say here, much of the interior suffering we experience is on the second level. And much of the healing that we seek is on the same level. Something can be achieved here, but the healing brought about through contemplation reaches to the first level of disorder, the sources of the passions or emotions. Because there, we allow the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to touch our being and not just our reactions. And that gives us, as you can see, very holy people are usually pretty much at peace. And they're not pushed around by emotions. I don't mean they're rigid or dried up sticks. I mean, they're just, there's nothing disordered about it. Some people, their laughter is so out of order. It's so buffoonery. To say nothing of eating habits and things like that. And then, the, the world that surrounds us the television especially, but the movies, they present images to us which elicit from us these emotions, these passions I'm talking about. You see? Um, and so, that's the world we're in. In other words, there are more solicitations to disorder in our emotional life uh, today than probably in any other age. Um, so, let's look at the four basic movements. There's desire, pleasure, fear, and uh, sadness. See, countered with a good, if it's absent, we desire it. If it's, pl if it's present, we, we rejoice in it. In evil, if it's absent, we have fear. If it's present, we have sadness. That's the basic. Now, by the time some of those things are captured in our imagination, they have the same effect as if they were present. That's why healing of memory is so important. I wrote an article, I was one of the first, 1972, on the healing of memories. It was in the Review for Religious and reprinted many times because there wasn't much out there at that time about this world of our emotions. Okay. Uh, so, that's the, the situation. Now, we're going to continue next time looking at the, uh, the means of healing.